Oh, hi there. I didn't see you there. Today I want to talk to you guys about Grinchy because I know how much you guys love Grinchy and Lord knows how much I love Grinchy. I love that bird so much. That is the quality content that you all signed up for, is Grinchy. I mean, and Dobby and Nifflin and everybody else, but like Grinchy's story is amazing. So let's let's talk a bit about Grinchy. Oh, and there's a crate down here which holds our new baby skunk. If you guys haven't already followed me over on Instagram and Twitter, then you won't know that we have a new baby skunk and he's going to be in next week's video. So be sure to subscribe. Let's go feed Grinchy. First question is from Avery Jean and Avery Jean asks, how many bags of worms do we go through in a week? Well, that is a really great question. And the answer is we go through three boxes of 1000 worms every week. So we go through 3000 worms a week but not for Grinchy. Mwahaha. Oh, hello. Are you waiting for something? Yeah, feeding this many animals, this many worms is definitely not cheap, um, which is definitely a downside to when you have a lot of animals is literally everything you make basically goes on the animals. Oh, Grinchy, is that nice? He dropped it. Silly sausage. Danny's joining us in the car today. You could have told me, so I wasn't like double chinning it. Steven. So our next question comes from Destiny Autumn 17 on YouTube. Have you found out if Grinchy is a male or a female? The answer is no, it's still guesswork right now. I have my suspicions, but we're gonna get him DNA sexed where we send off some of his feathers and actually um, have them analyzed. Hi. Sorry, I get it, Hi. You're so handsome. We didn't want to deprive everyone of you. Um, so that will be in an upcoming video, but the answer is no. This question is from Victoria's Pets, and Victoria's Pets asks, does Grinchy prefer men or women? And the answer is that Grinchy is terrified of men. So my theory is that maybe it was men that captured him. I can't verify that, but he's terrified of all men, but loves women. Inner Reptile Exotics asks, was it hard to get Grinch fully recovered? To be honest, he's not fully recovered. He still plucks his tail feathers. Um, I, and I would like to get his beak a bit more smooth on one side. But apart from that, he's doing a lot better. That's why I wouldn't recommend buying any wild birds because they're so sensitive and when they get an issue, it takes a long time to resolve. Um, his plumage as well, is he's not as fully feathered as I would like him to be. Um, you can't tell just from the surface, but he's definitely not as full feathered as a very, very healthy red-billed hornbill. Um, but he's about as healthy as I could hope for him to be at this point. And honestly, I'm astounded that he's done so well. Amber Light says, did you name Grinchy after the Grinch? Yes, actually I did. And the reason why I did was because you know how it's like the Grinch that stole Christmas? For me, it was the Grinch that stole my heart at Christmas. Ooh, Sophie Fletcher says, are you going to make him an educational animal now that he's so healthy and seems comfortable in a lead? Danny? Yes, there's no freeloading at this household. He has to work. Yeah, absolutely. He will be going on limited shows. Um, it's a slow process to get him there, but that's the goal for sure. That said, if Grinchy for whatever reason doesn't enjoy the shows or if we think that he is very stressed, that's it. He won't be doing any more shows. For us, we never force the animals to go on educational shows. If an animal doesn't like it, they retire, they stay with us. So he's not gonna be forced. Dobby and Niffler on Twitter. Yes, Dobby and Niffler have a Twitter. It's not run by me. It's legit run by Dobby and Niffler. Um, does our dear brother enjoy anything other than his worms? Hashtag no worms for Grinchy. Well, Dobby and Niffler, yes, Grinchy enjoys his dust baths. He enjoys being sung to. He is loving his new iHome, uh, not sponsored by the way, iHome uh, speaker so he can listen to music out in the Avery while I'm at home and I can control what he listens to. Um, and he just loves watching other animals, whether or not they are birds. He loves just spectating. He's definitely a spectator. The duskiest conure says, what was the most important step in gaining his trust? Time, patience, consistency, routine. 
those were the great things. He knew in the morning straight away I was going to say good morning, always say good morning to Grinchy, and then he knew that he was going to get his worms, followed by this, followed by this, followed by like a light touch session, followed by this. So he grew to become accustomed to that and once he was in the routine of all this happening and being calm then I could change it up a bit and we could sort of expand our trust of each other so just time, patience, consistency and routine. Zachary Gregana um, on Twitter says what happens if Grinchy eats the doves food or what will happen if the doves eat Grinchy's low iron pellets? Really good question. So Grinchy can eat any of the doves food. Grinchy will be, um, would be a seed eater in the wild as well. He'd eat seeds and bulbs and all sorts of things. The doves, I was very worried that they were going to try and eat his low iron pellet, which is why I introduced the doves to the aviary first and got them used to their feeding station in the hopes that when I put Grinchy's food in, they would just not pay any attention and that seems to have worked they maybe pecked at his low iron pellet once and just thought do not like the texture of this because it's quite mushy which is not a good texture for doves they just leave it so they don't have any confusion over their foods Elijah on Twitter says worms for Grinchy no worms for Grinchy L is proud of Louis on Twitter says what is the best thing about handling him for me it's almost an ego thing in that I know that I've managed to gain this bird's trust and it's an ego thing but it's also a rewarding thing as well. I know when he's on my hand I earn that. I really really earn that and I will never abuse that and I'm just really proud of him. Eli Workman on Twitter says why does he look like an old man? Why does he look like an old man? <laughs> Douglas Thurman on Twitter says, what do Grinchy kisses feel like? I just feel like that. That's all. That, that's, it's, that's what it would feel like. This is what Grinchy kisses feel like. Grinchy kisses are love. Grinchy kisses are life. Oh, this is, this is a really good question as well. What is so special about Grinchy species? Like, how do they behave? Or what's something they do unusual in the wild, but part of their lives? That's by Mark Newell on YouTube. I'm gonna take this one. Go for it. You know what I'm gonna say, don't yeah. you? So, you guys know that I love my bonus weasels. Well, so do Grinchies in the wild because red billed hornbills actually will work together with mongooses. Yes, mongooses. And they will actually hunt together for the same kind of animals. And the red billed hornbills will sometimes in the wild not start hunting until mongooses are out and also hunting. They will literally hang out together. <laughs> Has it just pretended to be dead? Yes. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, God. How do I... <laughs> that, that is hands down. The coolest thing. <laughs> Rebel Hornbells, Mongooses. Always together. Squad goals. I'm going to go into the deeper questions. Get, get down deep with me, guys. Deeper. Maddie Gill. This is a hard one, Maddie. Why would you do this to me? Do you ever feel guilty that you have him as a pet? I know you saved him and didn't take him out of the wild yourself. No, not at all. You don't feel guilty? No, I don't feel guilty at all. I think, um, I, I tend to think of it a little more positively than I think he would have been in a lot worse of a situation if he wasn't with us. So I think we were the best case scenario for him and for us. I agree there but I still feel guilty because I naturally feel guilty about everything <laughs> ever like I, I have this Catholic guilt you're just British and polite <laughs> I'm British polite and was raised Catholic yeah, so yeah. British polite I, I that's like a triple whammy for me of just feeling guilty about everything <laughs> uh, so I do feel guilty um, but I do know that it's the reason we've ha had him is the reason he's alive today I, I have no doubt and I'm not trying to be like good for us we did a great thing uh, I just know that he probably wouldn't be alive, most likely wouldn't be alive if we hadn't put months and thousands of dollars into him. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, no. I, from a creator point of view, also do feel guilty because I feel like some people might watch me and think, oh, I'm going to get a Grinchy of my own. Don't do it. Just don't do it. No. You have no idea. Birds we are in both general. 
Birds in general are always a huge decision. Do not take getting a bird lightly. It is basically like having a small child that will never grow up and always demands your attention. Always. Yeah. So don't take that lightly. And just remember, zoologist and zookeeper of how many years? Too many. <laughs> yeah. Both of us. So. Yeah, and he was still a challenge. Okay, so this question comes in from Alexis Afton, and it's what's the best course of action to take when you see an animal in need at a pet store? What's the best course of action? There's no single course of action that you can really take. It's not black and white. Yeah, it's um, usually pretty complicated. I mean, if it's a situation where you're seeing an animal that a pet shop regularly carries, you're gonna have to try to find a way to break that cycle. If it's a one-off, where it's a fluke thing that they're getting and then, you know, and, and you feel that, that animal needs to be rescued and then that's a possible candidate, but you really have to take it by an individual, by individual basis. And you also have to have the, the means and the abilities to rescue these animals sometimes. I mean, if you're not ready to pay for a huge vet bill on a relatively cheap or inexpensive animal, that's usually one of the facets involved in rescuing these. So these are all different factors you have to take into account and there's no simple black or white answer for them. If you see an animal which is in a terrible condition in distress, the best thing you can do first of all before purchasing the animal is talk to the store. Sometimes stores are so busy that they just don't see. You know, they these store workers sometimes go in every day, it's all the same to them, they just kind of glaze over things. And sometimes they just need that fresh pair of eyes to say, hey, you really need to do the waters here, or excuse me, I, I don't think this animal's in a good condition. Um, you can try doing that, a lot of pet stores are very reasonable, but I don't think it's a good solution to just buy every animal that you see as needing help. I know that a lot of you watching are amazing animal lovers, I know you're all super empathetic, I understand that, I do, and it's so hard when you see an animal that you know you can give more to, but just remember, every time you purchase an animal, that's not really a rescue. In some ways it is, but it's a purchase and that's all that a lot of pet stores will care about is that you made a purchase and when they go through the itinerary at the end of the month and see what made them money they're just gonna go buy more of that so in general I'm not in the practice we are not in the practice of rescuing animals by purchasing them but in certain circumstances we will it's different for everyone so go with your gut and remember, you can always, always report a store to your local authority because every pet store has to have a license, a stringent set of criteria they have to meet to have a license. So it's someone's job to make sure that these stores are performing well. Find out who that person is, talk to them, but first of all, talk to the store. A lot of store workers, they're not monsters. They do love the animals, they just sometimes don't see. So if you can strike a bargain where everyone's happy, that's great. You take the animal home, give it your love, and the pet store doesn't have to worry about another dying animal. But just remember, it's not always black and white. So go with your gut, and I really thank every single one of you who's ever tried to help an animal in any way, shape, or form. Like That's a wonderful thing. This is the last question, guys. It's one that I've avoided for a long time, but we're going to talk about it. If, this is by, uh, by the way, this is by Rihanna Dunman. If you could return him back to the wild, would you? One, two, three? No. No, we wouldn't do it. Long uh, answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, there's, there's, it's not an option. It's just not an option. There's so many reasons why we couldn't, and I'm sure that alone could probably be a video. Um, but primarily, it's, okay. Maybe it'll help if people understand how these birds come to market. Let's do that. So Grinchy was doing his Grinchy thing with his Grinchy fam, and he was probably netted, I'm going to assume, because that's a really common way, um, an inexpensive way for people, collectors, to get these birds. And what they'll do is they set up these mist nets, which are really kind of invisible nets. Across, really big. Yeah, really big across an opening in the canopy. And as the birds fly through those, they get ensnared in mid-flight and they're captured. Now, these are collectors that are usually villagers, very poor income, low people, who go out and kind of do their job of capturing animals. Then they will bring them back to a dealer, an animal dealer, who will then sell them to an exporter. The exporter then sells them to somebody, let's say here in the United States, and then Grinchy would have made his way from the forests, being captured, to the exporting station, 
From there, they come into the United States, they're quarantined for a while, and then they get distributed to the dealers in the United States. So at this point, Grinchy's probably been looking at about a month or two in captivity and a lot of trauma. He's been caught in a net, transported in a sack, kept in a small cage with a lot of other chattering birds, and then constantly moved around to new boxes and cages. If he's lucky, he's getting fed and watered in between there somewhere, right? Then, ultimately, he makes it here to the United States. After leaving the export station, it'll go to a dealer, and the dealer will usually sell it to a pet shop. At that point, he's gotten here. There's no way to retrace those steps to get him exactly where he came from. And Grinchy could have come from anywhere because these people are not based in one particular area. A lot of times these collectors will travel very far distances to get the animals that they require and then bring them back to the exporting station. So we would never even know where Grinchy came from. You would never get approval to export Grinchy back into Africa and release him. If we did, it's not as simple as saying, well, he's a West African species, so let's go to the Ivory Coast and find a nice place to release him. Because what would happen is First, that's not farting by the way, that's our chairs rubbing against each other. He could die in transit. About 90% of birds when they are wild caught will die in transit. So Grinchy's already a lucky one. He already survived huge trauma and to put him through that again would likely kill him. Then we'd have to find someone with a facility to do a soft release. And what that would mean is to put him in someone's outdoor aviary somewhere along the Ivory Coast, get him used to actually hunting again, get him used to natural bacteria again, because he now has completely different bacteria here in New Jersey that he's used to, and it could kill him and all the other animals around that he came into contact with if we released him back into the wild, because he could bring in some contamination from either transport or here in Jersey that all the other animals in the Ivory Coast are not familiar with. He has survived a lot of disease and parasites to get here, which means that he could be what's called an asymptomatic carrier, which means he could have the diseases but just not be affected by them. And that is an ecological time bomb. That is why we are seeing things like chytrid fungus and frogs and it's all being um, brought into the environment by pets that were once released. Chytrid is actually really um, interesting you brought that, but it's chytridia mycosis by the way. We should do another video about that at some point because it would be good to show people how to spot chytrid. Sure. Um, but that's, that's the long and short of why we will not be, even if we could, why we wouldn't send Grinchy to the wild. Is that you? Thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye. Shout out to Danny for sweating his body off. Can you put your clothes back on please? No, why? The camera and camera.